Hello everybody, my name is Joe Carter and today I'm going to be demonstrating uh, River Rats, PBRs, and PCFs in Vietnam mission uh, playthrough and it is a it can this game um, allows players to command one or two uh, United States Navy uh, PBR or PCF pa patrol boats uh, in the Vietnam War during the year 1969 in the uh, Mekong Delta area of South Vietnam and your goal is to survive a one-year tour of duty and uh, by accomplishing missions and not getting not getting killed or relieved of command so um, the footprint is a little bit larger than my Firebirds games so um, here we have the four mats showing uh, this is for example these are the uh, sandpan enemy sandpan mats when you have an, a sandpan encounter mission firefight not mission but encounter and uh, so it's not all gonna fit in the camera I'm gonna have to you know stack like for example let me show you here this is the uh, the mat the travel zone mat and then we have metals here and then this is uh, similar to Firebirds, but the difference, the main difference is the easy, the encounter zone. Uh, you don't travel through the zones. You just start out in the zone that you're assigned. Like whether, oh, it's an, a random encounter or your assigned mission. You don't travel through the zones like rolling each turn. You just start out in that box, that zone. Okay. So, and then this is a Mekong Delta area here, Saigon. So let's, uh, we're not going to use this. Um, the, the, the only relevant part for which zone number you're in is if you have wounded, uh, se severely wounded crewmen, um, the, uh, you're going to call for a, a Hilo medevac, a dust off uh, Huey medevac. And uh, if they're not available, then you're going to have to count how many uh, zones from base, the PBR PCF, PCF base you are, and uh, that, you know, the farther out away you are, the more chance that they'll die before you uh, get back to base. So let's uh, go ahead and let me explain the mats here. These are the PBF, uh, PBR mats. You have uh, individual crewmen, like with the uh, Firebirds, uh, Hilo games, and um, you have the different, like, here we have CO as commanding officer, we have Gunner 1, Gunner 2, Gunner 3, and we also have PAX for passengers. Uh, this, we're going to, today we're going to play a Sampan firefight uh, encounter, so we're not going to have any passengers. Uh, let's see, this is PBR1, PBR2. Th this can be played as a single uh, player or controlling both boats or uh, co-op two player. One person controls one boat, uh, the other player controls boat number two. And then you can see here we have the different types of damage, uh, just like with Firebirds, it's but you're on the water. And let's see, yeah, so we have, uh, we have fire extinguishers that can be used if there's a fire, which it can happen. And so, um, there are a lot of little rules I'm not going to explain right now that they're all in the tables book, books, um, and let's, uh, Let's see here. The let me. Uh, I guess I can just explain. Let me show you this mat. 
This is the mat we're going to use today, the combat mat. And uh, we have uh, day and night. And then you, you have the mat for like the different zones. It's kind of like uh, Devil Boat's uh, combat mat. Um, the different zones, or actually I, say, I should say Snail Boat's is more like this. Because there's a different mat for each uh, weather type. So if it's good weather, you're going to have three, maximum three zones. If it's poor weather, you're going to have two. And if it's bad weather, you're only going to have a close range zone. So this is a long, medium, close. And then this is where the sand pans uh, go. They don't move because they're so slow. Uh, the, the PBRs can easily close in or pull back. So let's see. And then this is basically a canal. Uh, the, you know, there are many canals in Viet, um, South Vietnam, of course, so the, the patrol boats are patrolling canals and rivers. But it, on the mat, in, in the tables books, uh, I represent them as canals. So let's, uh, so this is the firefight mat we're going to use for the sand pants today for that, uh, that encounter. And let's see, we have... Let me show you. This is uh, these are the PBRs, and there's only a four crew crew members. The, this is the uh, PCF patrol craft fast and then patrol boat river. Um, now the the boat mats are a little different than the print and play versions. These are my play test versions, so they're they're very similar but a little bit different, and. Um, so you can see you can hold more passengers and let me uh, let me read off the different types of uh, possible missions there are our encounters so here we have seal insertion mission soldier insertion mission seal extraction mission soldier extraction mission seal medevac, medevac mission so you're kind of kind of like a, you know a Huey dust off on the water because uh, these boats did do medevac missions uh, quite a few from what I understand so we have next we have okay soldier medevac mission and then Vietnamese soldier uh, villager medevac mission so lots of med chances of medevac and um, sandpan firefight that's what we're going to do today and then a VC ambush, the PBR squadron is ambushed by a group of VC fighters. So this is kind of a dangerous situation. It could happen. And then the sand pan stop and search. Um, that's where basically they're going to stop and check the papers. And, and when this happens, um, the game only focuses on the eventful dangerous situations. It skips all those, those missions or days that nothing happened. So in this stop and search... Um, you're going to check their papers and then there's of course going to be VC on board and it's kind of like a role-playing um, set of tables you have to make decisions and then depending on the situation and then whether you make a right or wrong decision you continue on or something bad happens so I, I wanted to put a little bit of role-playing in into this game just to you know, just to mix it up a little and give it a little bit, players a little bit different experience compared to what they're used to, maybe. So, and we have random events. So each each boat has its own, um, like the PBRs have, have their own tables, like see this is River Rats PBR, and then the PCF uh, boats also have their own tables book, set of tables. So they're separate and the one main difference between these tables uh, and the firebirds is you have the separate tables depending on the um, the type of mission or encounter so everything's separate I didn't want to mix all the tables and have like skip this table skip that table and boom 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 you know there were too many situations compared to firebirds in this game that I so I just went ahead and separated each situation or um, you know encounter or mission type 
So for example, table B tables are ambush, medevac, insertion, extraction only. And then this tells you where to go. You don't have to worry. It tells you which tables to go to. And another example is Sampan Firefight C tables. So we're going to use this set today. There's only a couple pages, like three pages. And then we have stand, Sampan Stop and Search, and it's like I said, it's kind of almost like a role-playing type situation. You have to make decisions, and it can be either good or bad outcomes. And then, uh, yeah, so then we have the damage tables, just like with Firebirds. And then more damage. Lots of damage tables. We have the wound tables here. We have a Hilo Medivac request if at the end of the, um, the mission or encounter uh, you have to kind of leave the, leave the mat, leave the area, and then you can request a Hilo Medivac. And then we have random events, just like with Firebirds. And then return to base, and then medals. It's it's if you play Firebirds, it's this will be very familiar uh, to you. Uh, it's the same game engine, but a different situation, different tables. But if you if you play any of my games, you'll notice that all of my games use the same basic game engine. Even my Robin Hood game and my Pirates, um, the Golden Age of Piracy game. So you know it, it's. It's a very flexible game engine. I can use any, use it to design any um, time period, you know, a game for any time period. So let's, uh, I want to go ahead and let's see anything else here. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and start getting ready for our mission. Um, here I'm continuing. Uh, a campaign I'm doing a long yeah I think it's been quite a long time since I played this all probably almost a year right there nine months um, yeah it's been quite a long time so let me let me double check one thing real quick here even though I designed it it's easy there's so much content it's easy to forget so um, yeah this Okay, let me double check here. Yeah, okay, so this one also has short campaign, long campaign games. So we're doing the long campaign game, and I believe so. Oh, no, I think we're doing the short. Yeah, we're actually we're doing short campaign game. So um, you're going to have basically less missions or events, and you're going to finish quicker. So we are on number... I believe we're doing short. I didn't write it down. Let's see. Let me look at the dates. Yeah, probably short. Okay. So uh, we're on... Um, okay, mission number five. And then the date is... We're going to go ahead and roll for the date. Here. Number of days until next enemy encounter. Or you could say mission. But that's the same thing. And we're gonna roll for a short game, two d ten, but one to a hundred, one to a hundred days between encounters. So it's much shorter than the long one. The long one is two d twenty, two to forty days. So I rolled a seventy-three, seventy-three days. So I'm gonna have to. Just guesstimate here in my mind. Let's see, 73 and so 60, so 6, 8. We'll do about 820. Eh, that's probably wrong, but my math is horrible. Okay, mission number 5. And then we do easy zone is 7. Okay, and then this was, uh, these are our other missions. Uh, we had a Sandpan Firefight, an Ambush, a Sandpan Stop and Search. We had a Medivac. And now we're going to do another Sandpan Firefight. Okay, and here on the mission two, 
We were ambushed and PBR2 was sunk. The commanding officer and gunner number three were KIA. So that was a tough mission. And on uh, mission three, the stop and search, we discovered a VC weapons cache. And they were all arrested. Nobody died. That was good. So sometimes your crew members will die when they board. Like if you do stop and search, you have to send two crew members from either boat onto... It's always boat sampan number one when it's a stop and search. So there's not two. There's only one. And um, you have to choose who you want. And depending on their skill, you know, they have language skill. There's diff different skills for this situation. So it's pretty interesting. You know, they, they can translate in Vietnamese, they can speak Vietnamese, so. Um, and let, let me go ahead and cover real quick. Let me read off the some of the skill points here, if I can find it. It's kind of, the, the, the skills, the crewman's skills are a little different, of course, than, um, than Firebirds. Like here, we have the CO, commanding officer. Now when you play this game, you would, if it's a single player or two player, like if you're player one, if you're just playing both boats, you would be the CO of boat, uh, boat number one. And if there's a co-op two player, player one would be CO number one. And then player two would be CO number two, boat number two. So. And if they die, the game ends. Like if if I die this campaign, I'm playing a solitaire. Um, the the campaign ends if my seal number one dies or is uh, severely wounded and discharged. So uh, the the types of uh, crewman skills CO has evasion, gunnery, medic, navigation, radar, and spotting. Gunner 1, Evasion, Firefighter, firefighter, Gunnery Language, Reaction, Spotting. Gunner 2 is Evasion, Firefighter, Gunnery Language, Pickle Barrel, Reaction, and Spotting. And number, gunner number 3 is Evasion, Firefighter, Gunnery Language, Reaction, and Spotting. Pickle Barrel is for the mortar. Uh, we have a mortar mounted on top of the M60 so that it was like a dual a dual weapon and then we have a 50 caliber MG on the back and then we have a dual 50 caliber machine gun on the front here so okay so uh, our skills right now I believe I'll show you these are the these are boat number two PBR two uh, they died in uh, mission number, what was it, number two? Yeah, mission number two, they died in the ambush, the CO and the uh, gunner number one, PBR two. And uh, the gunner two, PBR gunner number two was uh, severely wounded, so he was transferred back home. So they had lost three crewman that mission. That was a tough mission. So now we have the new ones here. And uh, the, this is PBR number one. So you got lots of extra space. Uh, I just spaced it so I can tell which boat is which. But you can mark which boat. And uh, But I wanted to leave extra space also in case there's replacements. Like here I left extra space and then I marked them out and X'd and then wrote the new ones below. So you can do whatever you want. Um, so anyway, my, uh, my PBR number one CO, me, uh, I got five spotting points, Robert, his name's Robert Spencer, and, um, the new PBR two CO also has five spotting. Spotting is good for ambush, uh, missions or insertion extraction because the, um, the v, the VC, the Viet Cong start out hidden, and so you have to spot them, or they'll ambush. So it's kind of like an ambush check. 
and ambushes can be absolutely devastating. They're hiding along the shore of the canals, waiting for the boats to come by. So, very devastating. That's how we lost P PBR2, was a, a, a heavy fire firefight during an ambush. So, it was a tough mission. And, uh, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're already in about 25 minutes, 20 minutes. So, um, I'm going to have to stack. We're not going to use this mat. This, you know, that, like I said, it's not going to all fit in the, the camera. So, this is where we are. We're going to start out in zone 7, our encounter zone. So, these are our boats, the two of these. And I believe I have medals. I didn't mark them down. Let me see. What am I scale? No, no medals. Okay. We are doing so poorly. We've earned no medals. So, um, okay, we have everything set up. And we are, um, we're already in the encounter. I'm going to have to put this map on top of the boats because there's no space for the carrots out of the the angle, the camera angle. So we start out at long range. This is PBR1, PBR2. This is the canal. And then the VC um, large sampan is number one. This is number one. And then the small sampan is number two. Now I already rolled for how many enemies there are. Um, sampan number one has a, an elite uh, Viet Cong RPG and um, the number two is a green uh, sniper, number three is a, uh, an average sniper, and number four is a veteran soldier, VC soldier. Now, Sampan number two, the small one, they have an elite mortar and a, an average RPG. So the elites, you know, they're tough, you gotta be very careful. So we're going to go ahead and let me show you here the canal width. You can have wide or narrow. This canal, this encounter is wide and it is nighttime and good weather. So we're going to go ahead and get started. This will be a very quick, a quick one. These don't take very long. The, um, you know, the sandpan firefights are usually fairly quick. So, we go to the sandpan firefight tables, C tables here, C sandpan firefight, and we've already rolled for the enemy units. So we already know what it is. We already know if good weather, both PBRs start out. The first combat round in the long range zone. Okay, we start out in the long range zone, then we can move. PBRs may change speed and range zones once per combat round. If fast speed, PBRs may change a maximum of two range zones. If medium speed, PBRs may change a maximum of one range zone per combat round. If slow speed, the PBRs must remain in the current range zone. So we're not going to go fast because there's a chance of collision with the shore, especially if it's night or bad weather and I don't want to get stuck or get, get damaged. Uh, so we're going to go medium speed. We're going to move one. And to track speed, I have these little counters here. We'll just use the one counter for both boats for now. If the, later, if the one boat gets damaged or whatever, um, one is slow, we can uh, use two different counters. But for now, we're going to just use one. And let's go ahead and go to uh, unit order of attack. Okay, uh, basically during the Vietnam War, if any sandpans were out, there was a curfew. And if any sandpans were out at night, they are, were automatically considered to be a past curfew, considered to be Viet Cong activity. And then the, from what I've read, they were, um, they automatically, the patrol boats automatically opened fire on them because uh, the villagers knew they weren't supposed to be out on the water after dark. So in this situation, yeah, it's nighttime and they should not be out there. So we're gonna just automatically attack them. So obviously Viet Cong. 
probably transporting weapons or ammunition or um, f food, who knows. But uh, we're going to sink them. We're going to try our best. And let's go ahead and go to unit run of attack. Okay. And we're going to use our draw cup. We have these draw cup counters, just like with Firebirds. And S2 stands for Sampan 2 and Soldier number 2. Sampan 2, this is number 2, and then this is Soldier 2. And then PBR2, boat number 2, is, uh, this is 2, I don't want to move this. And then 3 would be Gunner 3. Okay, so the number stands for the gunner. And if it's CO, it'll say PBR2, CO. Okay, so um, like the only time you might use a CO is if, if the boat's uh, disabled or, um, you know, you can't, he has to remain at the helm. But if the boat is stuck on the shore, like, uh, you know, or, or the, the, the boat's disabled on the water, like the engines are destroyed, then he can actually, and then let's say one of the gunners is severely wounded, he can actually switch positions and man the gun. But if the boat's like cruising around, he can't man the guns. He has to drive the boat. So let's go ahead and put them all in the cup. That's a lot of them. Okay, this is how many we have. It's a whole bunch of them. So each crewman or VC has their own turn. So quite a few. Okay, let's go ahead and mix them up and we're gonna draw. We are in combat. PBR2. Let me move this. Ah, oh, that's okay, I'll put it here. PBR2, gunner number two. I guess I will move this for a second just to show you. Okay, this is gunner number two. He's got the M60 machine gun and the mortar. Okay. Move this here, there, okay. And, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe I could fit it right here. That might work. If you can see that, that's a good, that's good. Okay, usually I don't do this. Usually I use the whole table, but I'm trying to fit everything into the camera angle here so you can see, see everything. Uh, you do need a little bit larger size table for this game than you do for the Firebirds. Especially during the um, Sampan Firefight, you're gonna have two mats. Usually you only have the combat mat like this, but in this situation, you have to have an extra two mats. So like normally it's like one, two, and then the this, the travel zone, the encounter, I should say encounter zone map, mat, and then uh, the combat mat. So normally it's four mats, but in this case it's five. So, okay, we drew PBR2. He's going to fire. We go to table, uh, unit of attack. We go to C4. We can choose our target. Oh, that's VC. Sorry, let's go ahead and skip. Okay, that's VC, VC, we're skipping. It's our turn first, thankfully. Okay, PBR gunners. Okay, we have gunner number, what was that, two? Okay, gunner number two can fire the M60. One time, or two times. Machine guns fire twice. And then the he can fire the mortar once, too. So he can fire three times. So we're gonna go ahead and target, uh, who should we target? Hmm. Let's go for the big one first. We're going to try to sink them. There's a chance we'll, we'll damage the boats here. forgot to mention. This is flooding damage and systems damage. Um, if it receives enough flooding damage, it just sinks. And then system damage, it um, eventually is disabled. It's the same here, but we have less flooding and less systems damage. So, Okay, we're going to go ahead and roll... Uh, we're going to fire, and then that, one more thing let me mention is the PBRs and the PCF boats, they have unlimited ammunition, unlike the, in Firebirds, so because they can carry so much, I didn't, you know, I figured they're not even going to track it. So, let's go ahead and roll for 
Yeah, we don't have our target encounter. I forgot about that. It's one thing I wanted to use. But... Okay. Uh, we rolled a four, and then we have our we have our modifiers here. Day, night. And I'll read. Uh, let's see. Okay, we've let's say we fired the um, we fired the mortar first, and it's nighttime. Now mortars can also fire uh, star shells, or more correctly, flares. I guess you would say they can fire star shells to illuminate um, instead of firing a regular round. I think, yeah, because we get a plus one. The only problem is. Um, the star shell only lasts one combat round. So I think maybe we will fire star shell actually. Uh, I think we'd have a. We might have a better chance of. Oh, actually, I do have a marked flare. Let's see. I thought it was marked as star shell, but. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, yeah, the. This is for um, silting. I changed the name to flare, but it's the same thing. So we we launched a shot of flare at the mortar, and we're going to go ahead and roll two more times. We're going to target uh, the same boat, the large v the large sandpan. We rolled machine guns, and we have no gunner skill, no gunnery skill. So. Um, we rolled a three and a seven. Let me just calculate these real quick. Uh, we're at medium range. Okay, and we have a flare, so that's good. And it's nighttime, so we have a minus one DRM for night. And it's a wide canal, so no bonus there. And we have a uh, we have a star shell fire, so that's plus one. So now we're at zero. And slow speed, idle speed. No, we're those are both misses. Okay, so that was a miss, but we still have the flare f floating down over the the sand pans. So let's go ahead and go here. Okay, PVR. Let's put these over here. Which one was the first one? Okay, PBR two. Okay, PBR three, gunner three, and that's two. This is number two. So he's a 50 caliber machine gun, just a single MG on the back. And we're gonna roll two times. We're gonna roll again on table C6. We're gonna go ahead and target uh, the large sandpan again. We gotta hit him. We rolled twice. Okay, rolled a four is a miss. I can already tell you. Rolled a nine. I believe. Let's see. Let me calculate these real quick. Okay, people. Okay, people are close. No, I don't think that was. Even a nine's not a hit. It should be. Let's see. Nine, yeah, the minus the minus one for night, even with the flare, it's still a miss. We're still a little bit too far out. We gotta get in closer, I guess. That's the only way. Okay. PBR one, gunner number two. Okay, PBR one, gunner number two is also the M60 and the mortar. He can fire three times. We're gonna go ahead and once more we're gonna attack the large sand pan. We're gonna, um, I don't know, if we launch, fire another flare. Nah, yeah, we'll fire a flare. Okay, so that's a flare. You, if you shoot a flare, you don't have to roll for flare. So, I'm gonna go ahead and roll now for the two for the machine gun. Okay, six, seven. Uh, unfortunately, those are a miss because we only get a plus one modifier now with the second flare. Yeah, let me put the second flare there. Let me find it here. Where 
is my flare at? Okay. There we go. We got two flares now. Floating down. It's a little bit brighter. Gives us a better chance of hitting. But we did miss, unfortunately. Oh, we're doing good. We got PBR2. CO. Okay, let's pull the CO out. They're not. They're just driving the boat. You know, they're not disabled or anything. We're going to put these off to the side. They can't attack because they're driving. Okay, PBR1. Gunner number one. Now, gunner number one. This, to this shows you how many times you can shoot. Gunner number one can actually roll four times. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna, we got four, four detail, we're gonna roll them all at the same time. Okay, we rolled a two, two, three, and a zero. So the, the zero hit automatically. Now we go ahead and roll for damage on table D, on table C6, note A. And yeah, we're gonna see if they're superficial or not. Okay, we rolled a um, 16 BC unit number two hit. So number two, we hit the we hit the sniper. You can't target specific units. You know, BC. You you target the boat, and then if they're hit, they're hit. Or if the boat's hit, it's hit. You you're not gonna like. Oh, I'm gonna kill this guy. It's, you know, it's moving around and it's longer distance, so it's not like you're going to, like, be a super sniper or something. You're firing machine gun. You're just you're spraying the area. So, okay, we hit him, and we're going to roll for wound on 1d20 uh, on note uh, C, table C6, note C. No, uh, yeah, C, okay. Okay, we rolled, uh, let's see, yeah, we rolled a 14, moderately wounded. Okay, let me see if I can find that here. MW, moderately wounded, sniper not his day. So that means that um, he can still attack, but uh, he's probably not going to hit us because of his wounds. Okay, CO, we're going to go ahead and pull that out of there. Okay, PBO, we're really pulling. Let me mix these up a little more. We're pulling all PBR crewmen. Not sure. Okay, there we go. Okay, Sandpan 2, number 2. Okay, that's the... Uh, the RPG. Now we're going to go back to table C C5 and out oh, C4. We're going to see who he targets, PBR1 or 2. Okay, they're targeting PBR number 2. Now we're going to go to table C5. And I'm going to use this this SW counter for my targeting because I can't I don't want to dig through all my counters right now while I'm recording this. So number two is targeted like that and um, what was that? Yeah, Sampan 2 number two. So he's a uh, an RPG so we're going to roll 1d10. Okay, roll a 4 uh, let's see, RPG is minus one DRM. No, that's a complete miss. Okay, no problem there. That's good. His RPG just flew right past or hit the water way, way far away from our boats. Okay, um, Sampan number one, four. So this VC soldier is going to attack. Let's see who he targets, boat one or two. Okay, boat, uh, boat one is targeted this time. So he rolls one time. Rolled a two, that's a miss. Total miss. Okay, let's keep going. Sampan 
Make sure you can see these. I'm doing it too far down, I think. Okay, sandpan number one, three. So that's a sniper. This guy here. He's going to target boat number one again. They like boat number one. Okay, sniper rolls one time. He rolled a one. A complete miss. Okay. And let's go ahead and do PBR1 gunner three. He's going to roll two times. We're going to target sandpan number one. Okay, we rolled a nine and a four. I believe the four, I mean the nine was probably a hit. Let me see. Yeah, because we got the plus one. Um, we got a minus one for night, but then a zero and then a plus one. So that's a hit on uh, sandpan one. We're going to go ahead and go for damage on table C6, note A. See if we hit a crewman or. Uh, okay, the sandpan was hit. So we rolled a. Um, 13, so that's two flooding on that sandpan. One, two. Okay, it's leaking a little bit, taking on a little bit of water, but that's still go moving along, no problem. And that was three, I believe. Yeah, okay. So, sandpan two, or one, number two, gunner. He's moderately wounded. He'll have to roll a 1d10, I can tell you right now. Okay, let's see who he targets. He's targeting number one. Rolls a one. Here, roll a five. That's a miss. PBR two, number one. Gunner is going to roll four times. We're going to target the large sandpan gun. Okay, I got a, an eight, five, seven, five. Uh, the eight is a miss. Yeah, it has to be a nine or ten to hit. That's a miss. Okay, Sandpan 2, number 1, he is their, oh, Elite RPG, okay, he's a little more dangerous. He's going to target, let's see, okay, he's going to target number 2, and we're going to roll one time, okay, he rolled a 4, I believe that's a miss, yeah, it's a miss, and um, I don't think yeah they don't get the modifier for the flare because we shoot the flare directly over their boats so oh no it is okay yeah um yeah okay so the illumination they also get the bonus for the flare so it works both ways uh, but that's still that's still a miss so they get a plus one drm like we do Okay, same pen one, number one. Okay. Wait, I think I just rolled. Oh, okay, I should have rolled. Same pen two, number one. That was the mortar, but that was a miss anyway, so we'll go ahead and roll for the RPG. They're both elite. So uh, we'll roll for the. Okay, we'll roll a four. That's a miss. Total miss. Okay, so that combat round ends. Uh, we're going to put them all back in the cup. And uh, we can go to the next combat round. I believe we're going to go ahead and move in closer. Close range. Now things should get interesting. Actually, we're at medium speed. I shouldn't be using this. So if for medium speed, there's, um, there's no counter. Speed counter. You have slow, idle, and we have fast, so nothing for medium. That's the that's the usual speed that you're going to use. And uh, we move into there. Okay, before we move, let's go back. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, we're going to have to roll for um, shore collision. You always have to roll for shore collision at the end of the combat round. So we're going to roll one time per PBR boat. Uh, one on table C7. Okay, we rolled a 12, and it is a wide canal, so it's minus 2, 
and it is we have no navigation skill points for the CO okay and it's night so it's a plus two so yeah there's nothing for PBR one's fine okay we're rolling 13 for PBR two nothing fine okay so then we go to table C8 for sandpan shore evasion uh, many times the sandpans would would run it out onto shore and then escape so they're trying to escape down the river uh, down the canal right now but if they feel like uh, they're about to get sunk or whatever uh, they will just beach it on the canal shore and then just make a run for it so we'll check each sandpan and see if they um, they beach it okay I rolled a 19 and oh, I don't know maybe number one actually escaped let's see okay we got a 17 so they got two damage points so that's minus two and as soon as you see okay night Okay, 16, 14. Okay, no, they did not because of the star shells or the flares. Um, they could not beat you. They're going to have to probably roll a 20. Yeah, that's the only way they can. Uh, okay, there's no way. So we'll go ahead and uh, go to the next combat round. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, we checked for collision. Okay, the next combat round. We got. Uh, fix this real quick okay I had a little bit of an accident there okay let's go ahead and go ahead and uh, do this again and uh, hopefully we can sink them let's remove these at the end of the combat run you always remove the flares or uh, star shells Okay, St. Van Warren, number one. He is a uh, an elite uh, RPG. He's going to target uh, PBR-1. Now, okay, forgot about that. Now we're in the close range. We moved, finally. That's the start of the next combat round. You can move before drawing from the cup. Okay, he's targeting him. Now we can't slow to slow speed uh, until the next combat run. We're still at medium speed. We might slow down to slow speed. Because if it's slow speed, there's no um, change uh, distance. So if we go to idle, then um, I believe it moves one, like both boats, it moves one farther as they cruise away. So. Okay, I rolled a zero. That's a hit. Oh, they finally hit us. We go to the damage tables. What was that? That was a... Oh, that was an RPG. Okay, that's not good. Um, we go to table E1. And to see what got hit. Okay, we rolled a nine. Stern section. We go to table E4. See what kind of damage we've got. I believe we're going to roll, yeah, we roll four times if it's a mortar or RPG hit. So we took some serious damage. Um, I rolled a one. Not good. One was gunner, two was hit. Number two, gunner, three was hit. Okay, this is turning out to be a bad mission, I think. Number seven, mortar launcher was knocked out. That's not good. And then nine, the bilge pump in the stern section was knocked out. We're going to have to mark these off. That was number one. Okay, stern section bilge pump. And gunner number, let's see. One, two, seven. Okay, the mortar is knocked out. Mortar launcher. Okay, we can't use that anymore. And um, we have to roll for wounds for our crewmen. We, it's a tough one. 
That was a lucky hit for him, that RPG. Usually you can take them out before they hit you with the Sandpan Firefights, but this time he got us. He was in Elite, so... Plus it was a zero. It was just a lucky hit. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and roll for wounds on table E6. Okay, we're going to roll for number one. I mean, number three. What was it? Three and four were hit. Yeah. Oh, Gunner. No, Gunner two and three. Okay, in the stern section. Yeah, so two and three. There's no four. Um, the, the PCF has four Gunners, but not the PBR. PCF has more crew, crew members, basically. So we rolled a one for wound. Uh, no wound. Good. Okay. That's great. And then we're going to roll for Gunner three. We roll a six. And he got one light wound. Okay, we're going to... I think I'm using the different counters. I have all these counters mixed up with all the different games. But I believe... Yeah, LW1. So we'll go ahead and just use an LW1. For that's Gunner 3, one light wound. Two light wounds is a moderate wound. So, or is it three? Yeah, let's see. Uh, no, three light wounds is a moderate one. So, um, okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, draw again. Okay, we took a hit. It was a lucky shot. Okay, let's get some revenge. Okay, PBR two, gunner three. We're going to attack. Mm, of course, same thing. Number one, Gunner 3 is our, let's see if you forget, like I just did, Gunner 3 is the 50 caliber. He can fire two times, but it's actually marked in the tables also. Okay, we rolled a 5 and a 5. Uh, that's, uh, go back to the right table here. Okay, let's find the table. Okay, two fives, and we're on close range, so we get a plus three. Yeah, those are misses for sure. Okay, PBR one, gunner one. We're gonna target a large sand pan again. Okay, we rolled an eight and an, an eight and a six, so five. Okay, the 8 is a hit, and we're going to go ahead and roll for, um, let's see what was hit on table C6. Um, note A. Okay, roll a 12. Same pan took one flooding damage, so he's taking on water, but he's not sunk yet. Okay, let's continue. Oh, I think I was supposed to roll... Okay, let me go back. I was supposed to roll four times for the gunner number one. So each gun gets to roll twice. He's a double. Got two, so let me roll. Okay, it's a seven, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's... No, that's nothing. Okay, so he missed. Go ahead and continue. Same pen one, gunner two. Okay, we're at about an hour. I'm going to try to finish this up. This is taking a little longer than I was hoping. Um, so, it's, uh, Sandpan 1, Gunner 2. He's the one that has the moderate wound, the sniper. Okay, they're going to target boat 1. He's going to roll one time. 7, that's a miss, because he's very wounded. The more wounds he has, the less chance he has of hitting his target. So. Same pan two. Number one. That's the RP. Uh, that's the mortar. He's going to target boat two. And he's an elite, so let's hope he doesn't hit us for close range. So, one. Oh, that was close. Okay, that's a miss. Very risky. 
PBR1, Gunner 2 is, yeah, that's the, okay, there's no damage, that's the boat too. So we're going to go ahead and fire, uh, we're going to fire, okay, yeah, well, I'm not going to roll. We're going to go ahead and fire a, a flare. We use the mortar to fire a flare, uh, to fire a flare. So now we're going to roll the two times for the MG. Okay, we rolled a zero, but that's an automatic hit, and a six, and a five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, the the six is a miss. So uh, we did get one hit on sandpan, large sandpan number one. Okay, we rolled. Okay, we rolled a ten. One systems damage. Once they get six for the large sandpan, it's disabled, and it's easy, much easier to hit, because they're like weaving back and forth. They're they're not cruising really fast, but they are moving along. They have the, you know, gas powered engines, so we're much faster. But still, they're a moving target. Once they're just stationary, you can just you know, much better chance of hitting them. Okay, PBR2, Gunner2. He's going to attack, of course, we're going to target the large sandpan number one. And he is, uh, yeah, his mortar's knocked out. So we're going to only shoot um, two times for the MG. Okay, we rolled a seven and a four. The seven's a hit, I can tell you right now. So we're going to go ahead and roll for damage. Oh, that's a good one, I think. Let's see, we rolled 16. That means the BC2 was hit. Okay, we hit him again. This is not his day, the sniper. He was already moderately wounded. Let's go ahead and roll for wounds. 1d20 on note C, table C6. We rolled an 18, he, that's a serious wound, and it's cumulative, so he's killed in action. We killed our first VC, it feels pretty good. I know that sounds bad, but this is war, war is hell. Okay, he's killed in action. Good, okay. Now, let's go and... Okay, same pen one, gunner four, or BC four, and that's the soldier. They're gonna target us, boat one, and we're gonna roll one time. Roll the seven. Mm, what skill? They're a veteran. Ah, oh, maybe that's a hit. Okay, we rolled on um, table C five. So let's see. Knight is minus one. But we got veteran, that's plus two, so it's plus one. And we have star shell, so plus two. Nine, no, almost. That was very close, but he missed. Okay. The knight saved us, the minus one knight modifier saved us. Let's go ahead and go. Okay, Sampan two. Gunner 2. Let me go ahead and remove Sandpan 1, number 2. He was killed in action. So we'll put him over here. Okay, Sandpan 2, number 2 is the RPG. He's going to attack um, Boat 2. And he's got he's got average skill. 4, that's a miss. For sure. Okay. PBR one or PBR two gunner one. Okay, gunner one gets to roll four times, and none of these gunners or crew members have any skills. We only have the COs have spotting skill, but we don't have any any other gunner skills or anything like that. Okay, we roll. 
two sixes, a zero. Okay, we got the zeros a hit for sure. And yeah, so only the zero hit. We were targeting number one Sandpan. Let's see what kind of damage we got. Okay, we got a 10. And that means one system's damage. Okay, still taking some damage. Nothing major yet. Okay, we're running out of time here. I hate to cut this video off in the middle of the battle, but I'm about to run out of uh, memory on my phone. Okay, uh, Sampan 1, number 3. He is the uh, sniper. He's going to target boat 1. And he's going to roll... Okay, he rolled a 9. That's a hit. That is a hit for sure. Okay. We're on. We have to roll for damage on table E1. Okay, roll a 10. Stern section. We go to table E4. And we roll 1d20. One time. What was that 3? Yeah, that was a uh, sniper, so. Okay, we roll a 14. Okay, the engine got hit. Um, we're going to roll 1d6 to see which engine, left or right, or engine 1 or 2. Okay, 3. Engine 1 is knocked out. So we lost engine number 1, boat 1. Penetrated the hull and knocked out engine 1. That's not good. Okay, now let's go to the next draw. This is the last draw for this combat round. EBR one, gunner three. He's gonna roll. We're gonna attack the large champagne. Okay, we rolled a seven. The seven's a miss. The zero. We rolled a zero. That's a hit. Okay, we rolled a twenty. Let's see, that's a 20. Let me check. Way in the back here. Okay, we see six. Number six is it? There is no number six. <clears throat> if the, the number is not present, then it's superficial hit. No effect. <coughs> so that's that. Now let's go ahead and roll for shore collision for each boat again. No, actually, let's uh, yeah, we roll for shore collision and then same pan shore evasion. So we're on table C7, 1d20, roll the 2, no collision, that's for boat 1, boat number 2, 8, no collision. Now let's roll for same pan evasion, 1. Okay, 20, okay, one, um, one evaded, that's it, um, yeah, so if it's a, if you roll a 20, it's automatic evasion, so he's gone, but we did kill one VC, so that was good, so he, he escaped, somehow he got out of there, let's remove this. Now we'll leave this up for the modifier. We'll roll for him. Okay, roll to seven. He's still here. The small sand pan. So the combat round ends. Next combat round. Okay, let me actually let me go ahead and pull out the sand pan one. Draw. Draw count cup counters. We're not going to use those anymore. Two, two, okay. And I think I'm missing one. Oh, I think I'm missing. Let's see here. I'm missing the Sampan two number one. Where is he at? Two number one. There he is. Okay, I pulled the wrong one out. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and draw. We're gonna go ahead and go to. We're gonna. We're gonna go to idle speed. We're right up close to them. We're gonna like cut the engines and just blast the hell out of them. Okay. The engine modifier won't hurt us. That knocked out one. Uh, engine number one's knocked out. That won't affect us. So. We're kind of putting ourselves at risk. We remove a flare because you know they can hit us with this this elite mortar there's a good chance it can hit us we'll go ahead and remove these they're gone they escaped they survived to fight another day except for the the sniper actually let me go ahead and leave this here so it's as a reminder we'll mark that down later okay we're almost finished here i think we'll take him out quickly now there's only two there's a small sandpan okay PBR one, gunner two. Okay, little sampan, I don't think you have a chance, but we'll see. Who knows? Anything can happen in this game. Um, so we are on uh, gunner two. That is number two. I mean, num boat one, two. Okay, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and fire a flare and then I rolled a zero for the first shot that's good and I rolled an eight for the second shot. wow that was lucky rolls okay lucky lucky okay so uh, we, we fired the flare with the mortar and then we had two hits with the uh, gunner number two the M60 machine gun oh not this one this one okay this uh, this mortar's knocked out, but actually we're on, we're on PBR number one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and roll. Since there's two hits, we're gonna roll 1d20 together. Okay, we're rolling eight and the 13. We're checking on uh, table C6, note A. So eight and 13. Okay, one's superficial, and Sampan hit two flooding, so he took some he took some damage there, but he's still going. Okay, next. Okay, he's outgunned now. We have lots of guns, and they only have two. Oops, they only have two. So PBR one one. Okay, we're gonna roll four times. Okay, we rolled a three, seven, ten, and a nine. So the three hit, uh, the three dice hit. The three is a miss, but the others are hits. Wow, that's good. So we're gonna go ahead and roll three d twenties together. Okay, we rolled a seventeen. Wait, let's see, we rolled a yeah, an eighteen, a fourteen. And a 16. Well, that's strange. Okay, 14, 16, 18. Let's see what we got here. Sampan hit two flooding and two uh, two systems and two flooding. Oh, that was a heavy hit for him. Okay, he's almost disabled. And then that was that was the 14. The 15 is VC unit number one hit. Him. So we're going to roll for wound. Roll 14. That's note C. Okay, he was moderately wounded. So we're going to go ahead and put an MW marker on that. That was number... What number was that? Was that number one or two? I think it was number two. Fourteen. Yeah, it was sixteen, so that's number two. So he was automatically hit. And then eighteen is we see number four hit. There's no um, number four. Let's see. Yeah. So if you roll like a number four, there is no number four. That means it's automatic um, uh, superficial hit.
So we have six here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, but we only have three here. So I did it all on the same, the same note. I didn't separate the boats. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, almost out of time here. I'm going to finish this up. PBR two, gunner one, four times. Okay, we roll two zeros, a six, and a four. Okay, three are hits. Can, right now I can already tell three are hits. Let's go ahead and roll three B20s. Okay, that's, uh, let's see, 11, 12. Okay, two systems, one flooding. And three flooding, two systems. I think he sunk. Yeah, three flooding, boom, boom. Two systems, boom, boom. Okay, he sunk. We sank him. So these guys are considered um, KIA. Maybe they can swim. Maybe they can't. Let's see. I don't know if I put a note in there for that. Okay. Yeah, as the note I put in, um, any severely wounded VC or KIA. So they swim ashore. Uh, he's still, he's wounded, but he's not severely wounded. So they both swim ashore. They're both sank. They lost their whatever weapons or ammunition, VC ammunition or food or whatever. So they lost that, but they survived. We did get one kill. So the the mission is finished. Uh, that's it. They're they're sunk. Just like that, it's ended. We did take some damage. There's no repair times or anything. Um, everything's fixed by the time the next the next mission or encounter occurs. So that's that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and we have nobody wounded, so we're not going to calculate this mat. Uh, this is not relevant unless only if the travel distance, if you get, uh, if you have wounded crewmen. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, look at our mat here, our uh, our sheet. We, we did kill one sniper, BC sniper, so that's an S. This is mission number five. Okay, and we're going to calculate what we got. It was mission accomplished, so we did earn, uh, I believe, let me see here. It's been quite a long time since, I, probably almost a year since I played this. So it's a little bit fuzzy, some of these rules. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we check for... Um, Return to base. We have an entire page for return to base. So we did kill one sniper. He was not elite or anything. So we got. Yeah, we got 10 bonus points, or one bonus point and 10 victory points. And plus we get, uh, we sank the sampan, so that's 50, and plus two bonus points. So we got three bonus points, and 60 victory points. Two bonus points. And then we have 25, 25. Oops, that's zero and 25. So we have 85 victory points total now. We had 60 victory points this mission, and then that was last time was 25. So now we have 85 total. That was a pretty good mission. Uh, it wasn't as, as good as I was hoping, but uh, we did we did get a few kills. We did sink their boat. And uh, we have no wounded crew, so we don't have to worry about recovery times or anything. A replacement crewman. So we are now at uh, 85 victory points. 
we have no medals. We're not doing very good this campaign because we lost that that PBR two during mission number two. So uh, that's it. Yeah, we're not we're not doing so well right now, but we're doing poor poor score so far. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna go ahead and end it now, and um, please check out. If you're interested in the game, please check it out on Wargame Vault. It's it's a lot of fun, and it uh, there are a lot of different types of missions or encounters you can, you know, you can do. And there's lots of different mats. It's it's a lot of fun. It's it's part simulation, part game. It's not like hardcore simulation. I didn't I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make it fun, playable, and fun also. So, uh, I, I've, I believe this is the first type of game of its kind, uh, focusing on PBRs and PCFs, what type of war game. And so I think that's all for today, and uh, thank you for watching, and I will probably be doing a, I will try to do a, a, a mission playthrough for my River Rats uh, SEAL Team game, if I, if I can. So it's uh, it, it plays quite differently than this. It's a land land combat game, where this is uh, of course on the water. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.